Hello, my name is Rainer Dale, and I am a junior at Meredith College. The title of my presentation today is Conservative or Liberal, The Problematic Politics of Film and Abortion. Abortion, or the termination of a pregnancy, is a common procedure. According to the Guttmacher Institute, one in four women will seek abortion services in their lifetime. It is also a hotly debated topic in society. Pro-life politicians and lobbyists want abortion to be criminalized, while people who, who are pro-choice prefer abortion to be legal. Abortion in the United States was legalized in 1973 with a decision in Roe v. Wade to extend privacy protections to cover reproductive decisions. The Supreme Court decided that privacy, quote, is broad enough to encompass a woman's decision whether or not to terminate her pregnancy, end quote. According to the trimester logic of Roe v. Wade, states could regulate abortion in the second and third trimesters. Another important Supreme Court case relating to abortion is Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which was decided in 1992. This decision upholds the state's right to restrict abortion, but also states that states are unable to create laws outlawing abortion in the first trimester. As of 2019, 17 states in America have abortion restrictions, including laws that restrict abortion at the detection of a heartbeat. By taking incremental steps to make abortion harder to access, conservative states are hoping to get the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. Pro-choice advocates warn that if abortion were to be declared illegal, women would resort to unsafe methods in order to receive abortions. Susan Wickland, in her book, This Common Secret, My Journey as an Abortion Doctor, acknowledges this by citing abortion statistics from before Roe v. Wade, saying, quote, an estimated 1.2 million women had illegal abortions in the United States yearly. As many as 5,000 died each year as a result, end quote. Abortion remaining legalized is vital to the health of women across the world because without safe and legal abortions, women lose their ability to define their lives as they see fit. There are two types of abortions, medical and surgical. A medical abortion is induced by a pregnant woman taking two pills. The first pill, mifepristone, is taken in a doctor's office and the second, misoprostol, is taken at home. These pills are taken early in a, in a pregnancy and the effect is like that of a miscarriage or a really bad period. The second type of ab abortion is a surgical abortion, which is effective and short, but it is also done in a doctor's office because it is still a surgical procedure. Despite that fact, surgical abortions are the most common type. All of the procedures performed by a practiced medical professional are safe for the women involved. Abortion is also a cultural and political issue. 82% of Democrats support all or most abortions, while only 36% of Republicans support all or most abortions. Pro-choice advocates support a woman's right to choose whether to continue a pregnancy, while pro-life lobbyists hold the belief that every pregnancy should result in a birth. Therefore, abortion should be severely restricted or outlawed altogether. By putting the fetus above the woman, pro-life groups overlook all the reasons why a woman would choose to get an abortion. These can include financial timing, relations with partner, other children, future opportunities, and preparedness. Because of the ongoing and intense debate about abortion, women do not find it easy or safe to share their abortion stories. The controversy surrounding abortion, coupled with the difficulty of speaking about it publicly, has meant that films and television shows that do address abortion are praised for their bravery and openness. However, despite the impression that these shows are liberal or progressive for merely addressing abortion or reproductive rights, most of the popular media repeats conservative attitudes and perceptions about abortion in the United States. They fail to accurately depict who is likely to experience an unplanned pregnancy, the obstacles they face getting an abortion, and what an abortion means to someone's larger life experience. As a result, there has been a conservative slide in abortion politics towards limiting access not only to abortion but also birth control. Positions that seem liberal and progressive are more often than not capitulations to conservative points of view.
One reason for this is that film and television shows make conservative stances on abortion seem more reasonable and justifiable than they actually are. To better understand how film and television shows depict ab depictions of abortions are more conservative than they appear, this presentation will connect the application of a scale used to rank different political groups and politicians who lobby on abortion to depictions of it in popular media. Doing so makes clear that popular media's depiction of abortion appears liberal for considering the topic, but it is actually more conservative in two important ways the justification for a character who elects to pursue an abortion, and the lack of discussion on important topics such as sex education. This scale is designed to measure how conservative or liberal a group, state, politician, or a piece of popular media is based on the position they take on several topics that make up the abortion debate. These topics include access to contraception, time frame for ordinary abortions, funding for abortion, sex education, emergency contraception, trap laws, Roe versus Wade, fetal pain, as well as government welfare programs, type of abortion procedures, stance on reproductive justice, consequences for doctors and women, justification for abortion, representation and diversity, and accuracy of information provided. Points were awarded to different individuals or groups based upon how upon release statements, law supported or passed, and actions taken. For media, it is based on how abortion is discussed or portrayed in film or television shows. The point of including lobbying groups, politicians, and states was to compare the rhetoric and discussion of abortion to popular media's analysis of abortion. Furthermore, the scale addresses how conservative popular media can be in how conservative popular media can be in its illustration of abortion, which allows for the juxtaposition of media to advocacy groups. Several important aspects of the sale include scale include diversity and reproductive justice. One issue surrounding the abortion debate is that abortion is much more accessible to white women, especially white upper and middle class women. Due to the Hyde Amendment, which was passed in 1976, states can limit abortion funding from Medicaid. By restricting Medicaid from helping to pay for abortions, women experiencing poverty struggle more to obtain an abortion. White women are also not stereotyped for terminating a pregnancy based on the presumed race of a baby. Lack of diversity fails to raise awareness about issues that women of color and black women face, such as little access to abortion clinics, especially for women in the South, where abortion is heavily regulated and clinics have to, have to be placed strategically due to trap laws. Reproductive justice, on the other hand, is an idea that is beginning to be championed by some pro-choice activists. Loretta Ross outlines three parts to reproductive justice. Quote, first, the right to not have a child. Second, the right to have a child. And third, the right to parent a child in a safe and healthy environment. End quote. These three factors allow for a woman to decide on whether or not to go through with a pregnancy, but it also ensures a safe pregnancy. Out of all of the entities analyzed, the ACLU, Sister Song, and the National Organization for Women are the most progressive groups, each with a score of 138. These groups strongly supported all of the issues on the scale, from access to contraception to expanding Roe versus Wade, and they took strong stances on the reproductive justice movement. The lowest score is a negative 221, which is the army of God, who has taken the most conservative stances on all of the issues except for sex education, in which they have no release statements. One movie analyzed is never, rarely, sometimes, always. This film has been championed as an accurate pro-choice film because it supports accessible and legal abortions and it opposes trap laws. It scores a 71, however, because the movie fails to address the reproductive justice movement in a meaningful way and it lacks diversity in its cast. The film addresses the struggle young women face in getting abortions in certain states, but it could have done a much better job of analyzing the struggle that minority women experience getting an abortion. The film Anti-Abortion Crusaders, on the other hand, scores a negative 56, 
This documentary addresses the debate surrounding women in minority communities receiving abortions by detailing concerns on abortion, highlighting advocates who say it should be illegal at all times, and repeat the claims that, quote, the most dangerous place for an African-American child is in the womb, end quote. The film does not consider that women often choose to get an abortion in order to protect the children that they already have or their children in utero. Furthermore, other films and television shows fail to accurately represent the abortion debate. One example is Dirty Dancing, in which the fact that the entire plot is driven by an unplanned pregnancy and a botched abortion is obscured by the story of a young woman coming of age through dance. Television shows, including Shrill and Jane the Virgin, also depict abortion, but there is a lack of conversation surrounding topics including reproductive justice, fetal development, and contraception, just like in Dirty Dancing. These topics are necessary to discuss in the abortion debate because the conservative movement around abortion has transformed the conversation into something where even birth control is immoral. By addressing and redefining these topics, the pro-choice movement can take back the conversation, but that means depicting abortion and other important topics in popular media accurately. On the abortion scale, Dirty Dancing scored an 11. While it takes place before Roe v. Wade and does show the danger of illegal abortions, the cast lacks any diversity whatsoever, and it only characterizes the struggle of a white woman. By only depicting white women as deserving of access to abortion, the film does not explore why some groups are more or less at risk for an unplanned pregnancy, how unplanned pregnancies can interrupt life plans, and how systemic structures reproduce poverty among marginalized populations. Jane the Virgin got a 43, and it illustrates a main character's abortion well, but it only depicts a conversation on the act of abortion. In order for a show to be truly progressive on the topic, they need to address more than just abortion. Topics including funding and discussion of Roe vs. Wade cannot be understated. Shrill, a television show about a journalist who is turning her life around, begins with the main character getting an abortion. The show scored a 38, and it is another show that depicts a white woman's abortion. Shrill does does address the flaws with Plan B. The show's writer, Lindy West, discusses that Plan B does not work on women over 175 pounds, so women who cannot use the pill are more likely to get an abortion, quote, because the medical community doesn't think about fat women, end quote. Furthermore, Shrill characterizes the main character's abortion as unsentimental and not a big deal, which is a good example of what abortion can actually be like for women. Rebecca Peters, activist and author of Trust Women, a progressive Christian argument for reproductive justice, details her first abortion and explains that her relationship with the fetus was practically non-existent. Quote, she regularly used contraception to prevent it, she didn't bond with it, and she never entered into a relationship with it. For her, it was an it. End quote. However, not all abortions are so unsentimental. There are times when women have to have an abortion in order to protect themselves, and that needs to be addressed in media as well. No one show has to depict every aspect of the abortion debate. However, many shows repeat the same stereotypes of white women getting abortions. This leads to a narrow and incomplete understanding of abortion in America. Compared to groups such as the ACLU and Planned Parenthood, as well as politicians including President Obama and Representative Ocasio-Cortez, these movies and television shows prove themselves to be much less progressive, and their depiction of abortion is more conservative than people acknowledge. Pro-choice lobbyists have a responsibility to hold popular media to a higher standard. If they truly want to be allies, then they have to represent the diversity of the movement. This includes fighting for diverse casts and educating the public on the importance and thought and thoughtful process women go through when making the decision to terminate a pregnancy. By continuing to depict abortion in a narrow and stereotypical way, popular media makes it difficult to understand the complexity of the issue. Media should be filled with more diverse narratives relating to abortion in order for society to see abortion as it actually is. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a great rest of your day.